See that? That's what a peak mechanical awesomeness looks like. This is ESR-71. Yeah, I can read the thumbnail, dumbass. It is one of the most iconic jets of the Cold War era. What sets it apart from those fancy 15 fighters is not its firepower or stealth capabilities. This guy got some serious raw and uncaged speed. It is one of the fastest jets to enter service. All those Soviets were like, Billy, you want faster jet? I will give you faster jet and made a MiG-25 which had more flaws than strengths, which is a story for another time. During its service, not even a single plane was lost due to enemy fire. Hey, you can't hit what you can't see. The SR-71 would be hundreds of kilometers away before the enemy could spot the plane and chuck a missile at it. The primary goal of the SR-71 was to spy on the Soviets. After the Soviets shot down the U-2 spy plane, the US was like, alright, cool, no more spy planes I guess. US promised the USSR that they won't spy on them and proceeded to develop the SR-71 to spy on them. Hey, it's not like I have a choice. Democracy should be everywhere. Here, have a gun. The US wanted something fast, something stealthy. So they brought in the Skunk Works division, the designers of the U-2 spy plane. The requirements for the new plane was insane at the time. Boys in the back room had to put some serious elbow grease into this one. Should fly above Mark 3, lightweight as possible, more range, cup holders. The amount of secrecy that went into developing and operating this plane was insane. The making of the SR-71 required some exotic minerals like titanium and other hard to make composite materials. Titanium was a very rare material which at that time it was only mined by Russia. So Russia, we are a company totally not related to US. Can we buy some titanium stuff you have? Of course comrade, you can take it. <coughs> Fine. The CIA even formed a dummy trucking company named Roadrunner International to transport SR-71 from one base to another base. They transported the plane in a huge box. When someone asked the drivers what's inside the box, they would reply, Heh, nothing. Some fancy alien technology. There was even an incident when a truck driver accidentally scraped the side of a bus. The CIA stepped in and paid the bus driver $3,500 just for him to stay silent. When it was unveiled to the public eye in 1964, it was the fastest jet with the highest top speed and advanced avionics. The flying ceiling was over 85,000 feet, which meant the pilots who piloted the plane were almost astronauts. At the speed of Mach 3.4, a small slip-up can make the plane into pieces. So if the plane flew a 3-hour sortie, it had a service time of 20 hours with a crew of 16, and which also required lots of dinero which US had plenty of. The fuel storing method on SR-71 was also unconventional. Normal planes stored fuel in a separate fuel tanks, but in the SR-71 case, it was a fuel tank. The plane would leak fuel when standing. When the SR-71 goes supersonic, the plane would heat up due to friction. Since the object would expand when heated, to counteract that, designers left gaps between the fuselage. Some will call it a problem, some will call it a feature. Either way, the guy servicing the plane did not have a great time. Even though the plane was made to spy on USSR, due to political issues, they couldn't. So US got into war with Vietnam and North Korea. The SR-71 saw plenty of action in Nam and Korea, providing valuable data to their allies. Who's there? What? Subscribe! The US even used it to troll other countries by flying fast during national ceremonies. And that's why we are the best country. <coughs> yeah, are you sure about that? On an unrelated note, US didn't want the SR-71 technology to end up in the hands of the Soviets. So one of the qualifications for the pilots was the pilot should have a family in the US. Kind of like a guarantee. So the pilots won't switch sides. After the 90s, the advancement in missile technology has made the SR-71 vulnerable. It no longer enjoyed the supremacy once it had. And with a lack of interest for US in spying the Russians, the SR-71 had to retire. Besides, the development of the orbital satellites made aerial reconnaissance quite easy. And even in the late 90s, it still had many secrets under its sleeve. So operating it further would increase the chance of enemies shooting it down. In 1999, the SR-71 spreaded its wings in the sky for the last time.